Hello my friends, my name is Ryan Freeman and you are watching a book review of Thomas Mann's The Magic Mountain. Came out in 1927, it is translated, my version, by H.T. Lowe Porter. It is a 700 plus page epic done by a Nobel Prize winning novelist uh, that has been around for many years and you have... Your grandfather probably heard of this novel, or your great-grandfather might have heard of it, because it made a big splash in America and all around the world. Thomas Mann was very influential. He is considered one of the key reasons that Hermann Hesse won the Nobel Prize in Literature. Hesse had always been, uh, his name had been thrown around, but Thomas Mann sort of leaned on the on that group that selects the Nobel Prize winners. That's what I heard anyways. I don't necessarily know that. For sure, this happened many, many, many decades ago. So Thomas Mann comes from a rich, wealthy German family uh, of merchants, and he goes into novel writing. I did a review for one of his first novels, The Buddenbrooks. Buddenbrooks? Budenbrooks? I don't know. Um, check that out if you're interested. And then I've read some of his short stories. I've read another one of his novels, and then this one. And this is actually the one that I wanted to get my hands on for a very long time because I first heard of Thomas Mann from that really famous mythologist who George Lucas said if it were not for his books, talking about Joseph Campbell, I wouldn't have been able to complete Star Wars. Joseph Campbell, who wrote The Hero with a Thousand Faces, uh, a lot about the hero's journey, um, a lot of the themes that you see in Star Wars, like Luke Skywalker sort of wrestling with the dark side, following the light side. A lot of that inspiration George Lucas found from Joseph Campbell. Joseph Campbell, very influential in the latter half of the 20th century. And in uh, some of his lectures, he would mention the Magic Mountain, the Magic Mountain, how mythologically powerful this was. So... Um, yeah, so with that being said, it is a hero's journey, uh, the main character. I'm not going to spoil it uh, too much. I'll just give you guys some overarching themes and some of my thoughts. The main hero, Hans Castor, is just, you know, just, he's a kid uh, who's just sort of wiggling his way through life like a lot of us, you know, has his good... Uh, points and his bad points. You know, he's lost his parents, but he's got a fortune uh, to guarantee him. He's got his education. He's going to join a profession that, you know, he's he's got laid out for him, but he's not super excited about. It's not like he's crazy about life. The only thing he's crazy about are his cigars. Um, and then he goes for a visit to visit his cousin who's staying in this sanatorium, uh, basically like a health resort for people who are trying to recover from tuberculosis and respiratory diseases primarily. So he goes to visit his cousin up in Davos, Switzerland, and he's just planning to stay for a few weeks, but suddenly he starts he starts to experience physiological changes. Like like he's get he gets a temperature and his face starts it just it's always a bright red. And he can't taste his cigars. And he's not accustomed to the climate in Davos. The air's different. But it's not just the air. It's the people. The people are very different. The way they live is not how they live in the lowlands. So there's this theme, you know, up on the mountain and the lowlands. And two very different modalities of being a human. And this is something that is constantly contrasted between being up on the mountain, the magic mountain, and being down in the lowlands. And so he's he's having physical changes, but he's also having sort of, for the first time of, of his life, he's having these spiritual questions and epiphanies that are just coming to him as he's meeting all of these various characters and having these new experiences in life. And if you know, if you remember what it was like to be a young person, what an exploratory Time that is both in reality, external reality, and all the new places and new and new people that you meet, but also in your mental expansion as well, and that never really stops. Um, but uh, it really is powerful in the in those early twenties. It was for me, and it is for Hans Castor. So, Hans, this is a minor spoiler, but he ends up staying more than just three weeks, and there's this theme of time. You really get 
you really get played with mentally on in question yourself as the author questions for you and runs you through all of these mental simulations like what is time is it real is it the same as what we have on a mechanical watch very interesting theme that is constantly recurrent starts off in the very front of the novel a start and you're like what the hell is this novel going to be about some philosophical query into the nature of time but then it it starts to get fleshed out more and more and so it's almost like so 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 Hans Kostorp doesn't really understand what life is like on the Magic Mountain until he spends time there and you don't really understand what this novel is until you spend time there it's not until you really get into it that you start to really get a feel for what it is so you are almost taken in the role of Hans Kastorp as you're trying to figure out what's going on with my body and my mind and you will go on an alchemical ride as well there are a lot of illusions and not just illusions straight out uh, pointings to the hermetic tradition and the alchemical furnace where lower metals are refined into higher metals that's just a metaphor but sort of your psychological and spiritual transformations as you as you go through experience as you go through life and as you go through suffering and as you face death and as you become a man or a woman life changes all of us some of us dive right in and some of us pay attention and some of us don't there's one main character i'm not going to say who who dies because he didn't pay attention to that internal compass that's a tragedy but it also is also very revealing there's a lot of characters who contrast off of each other there's two characters who represent opposing ideologies very dominant in the history of the world you have Settembrini he's an Italian humanist who stands for reason and progress in life then you have NAFTA he's a Jesuit shadowy full of contradictions who who likes death and blood and instinct and they f fight constantly with Hans Kastorp, who's sort of in the middle, like all of us, in the middle of various ideologies that are spread around the world, spread around the internet, as these two, Naf Nafta, the religious Jesuit, and Sentebrini, the humanist of letters, as they clash with Hans Kastorp as sort of their pedagogic pupil, trying to understand what's going on, but ultimately realizing that actually there's something beyond just the words. There's personality there's a character peepercorn he's my favorite character and i'm not going to say anything else because you got to discover this guy he is hilarious and amazing um and also just how the silence transcends it and there's a passage where hans castorp is mostly pretty there's not a lot of action action but when there is action it's like whoa and so there's this one time where he sort of gets caught out in a blizzard and has he has like a hallucination or I guess it's, you know, hallucinations can come from, you know, extreme circumstances like freezing to death uh, that reminded me of my psychedelic voyages better than m almost any other passage in a novel. Very amazing. And I believe that Mon referred to that chapter. Maybe it's the title of that chapter is Snow, something like that, as sort of really the heart of the mystery we all want to understand life and we find ourselves learning about life through experience through conversations through triumphs and failures through death and health and sometimes we get it gets crystallized we see it we see it we know what it is we know what life is and then it kind of fades away like a dream so there's this whole at least that happens to some people. <laughs> so there's there's this there's a lot of various themes that happen and stuff that all of us can relate to. If you've ever found yourself to be a person who uh, is curious psychologically, spiritually, and also how health and in mind intertwine, you know, are we sick because we're emotionally sick? Are we physically suffering because 
where our soul is suffering or our soul is in love? What's the connection between love and disease? I mean, there's a lot of ideas here. And it's not like any of it is shoved down your throat, but you, you, you have a battle of ideas and you have all of these ideas. And Hans Kastorp is trying to make sense of it. And I'm trying to make sense of it as I'm reading 700 plus pages in the Magic Mountain written by the Nobel Prize winning Thomas Mann. So pick it up if that sounds interesting. I will just say, uh, word of warning, uh, there are a lot of vocabulary words I was unfamiliar with. Uh, that, so I was constantly looking up with the dictionary. Um, but, but that's a joy of mine. I like to expand my vocabulary. And also there is, at a couple places, there are, there are a couple pages that are almost completely in French. So if you do read this and you don't have, mine didn't have the French translation, then um, just go online, Google, uh, Google the Magic Mountain uh, French to English, and you will find some very kind people who put the translations for those pages, and it will make it'll make it much easier. Because for a while, I was trying to use my phone and use Google Translate, and that was annoying. So, anyways, thank you guys for watching this review. I hope that you like it, and I hope that you read it, and put your thoughts and comments down below. My name is Ryan. Bye.